Welcome back to the football podcast from We Play Strong. In this episode, we're looking at the idea that footballers should stay out of politics. We're going to talk about the broad spectrum of issues that footballers use their platform for and how beneficial it is for the cause and the individual. My name is Rocky Heyakaya and I'm your host. Joining us is the most capped Welsh player of all time and OL Reign midfielder, Jess Fishlock, and Lincoln Picks FC and Sweden internationalist, Nila Fischer. Welcome both and thank you for joining us. How are you doing, Nila? I'm fine, thank you. And thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this one. Cool. And Jess, how are you over there? I'm good, thanks. And same, I'm really looking forward to this one too. Cool. Okay. So Jess, Nila, you've both used your profile to bring attention to issues that are important to you. Uh, Jess, you actually talked earlier this year about a potential future career in politics after you hang up your boots, of course. What is it that attracts you down that path? Um, yeah, I, th I think for me, it's just watching over the last kind of, I would say definitely five years at least, that... I feel like society is kind of really moving in, in, in a negative way. And I feel like, you know, we, we, can, we can do votes and we can do things like that, but actually the, the bigger policies that are really affecting kind of everyday people, the decisions are just being made for all the wrong reasons. And so I kind of want to get to a point where I can affect that type of change. Um, and so that's what's kind of making me really interested in in what that kind of career pathway looks like. I feel like, you know, if I wasn't an athlete and I didn't have the platforms, my, my views would be exactly the same. You know, it's who I am as a human being. It's what I believe in. It's, it's the principles and like the morals and the ethics that I kind of live by. Um, I just happen to, to be an athlete right now that, that, that therefore means I kind of have a bigger platform than, than say just, you know, a, kind of a normal person that would be having these viewpoints and, and wanting to get their point across. And so I'm kind of just using that to help my views and, and to kind of allow people to maybe think a little different or feel a little different, especially when it comes to, you know, minority communities at the moment that just seem to be getting absolutely kind of trashed really all over the world. And it's, it's kind of more... I kind of just want other people to, I don't know, be able to, yeah, listen, have their opinion, but maybe broaden their mind and broaden their mindset to things that are different or things that they've never kind of learned about or understood or never had education about, you know, and I, I think that if, if I do that the right way, then, then maybe that will help, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that's a beautiful vision as well. Um, so um, I personally feel like women's football sometimes is a political statement in itself. Um, how do you feel about that, Nila? I think I think what's what's personal to you is always political, and I think sports in general uh, has a lot to do with politics. People are saying like, yeah, but don't involve the politics in the sports. But I think. Uh, uh, that's not true. I think it has a lot to do with everything. Just look where the champion championships are are being played. Uh, for example, uh, both in if you look at soccer at the World Cup uh, that's coming up, but also a lot of other arrangements. So I think that's always uh, and women's sports, women's soccer is definitely a political thing. I would say. I mean, back in the days we were not allowed to play. So I think that's not. Um, you can't say that it's not political, according to me. Yeah, I think it's it's like a vehicle for, for equality. Even uh, if I speak to, for example, women in corporate, where there's also a lot of inequality, uh, they love the women's football because they just see the warriors on the field and we're all kind of battling for that same equality. So, uh, yeah, I totally understand what you're, where you're coming from. Um, so, Jess, you've said recently that there are some big decisions politically, and also you just uh, referred to that uh, just now, uh, as a human being, and you fundamentally Disagree, disagree with. So why do you feel empowered enough to talk about that? 
I think because what I've realized over over a long period of time whilst playing and, and kind of being this athlete is that especially in the women's game the way that our sport has, has been developed and I don't know if, if Miller agrees with this but we are far more human beings before we are athletes I, I don't know if it's that easy to do that in the men's game because the game is so big and it's this massive corporation and money controls everything but I feel like in the women's game because we kind of took the game ourselves and just drove it forward and drove it forward and drove it forward. Um, we are, we are human beings before we are athletes. And so I feel like who I am as a human comes before who I am as an athlete. And so the things that I stand for in that respect, yet I feel empowered because I believe in who I am as a human and I believe in what I believe in and I, I don't, you know, get deterred by that, you know, whereas I feel, I, I can for sure separate the two, you know, um, but I just, I don't have to, you know, and so that that's why I feel that way. I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, Nila, because also a question for the both of you. Um, what is it that fuels that fire in you? Jess, you already spoke a bit about that, but what makes you feel so passionately about this, Nila? Like with the struggle that we have had in the, in the women's game and how we ourselves brought it forward. And uh, now to a certain level, we want to have even more, be even better and so on but we still made it kind of ourselves and I don't want the next generation like they feel that they can't dream big because they can now because of a lot of players um, like us who took the struggle but like overall not being quiet, quiet talking, saying what we want to say and uh, just issue what kind of showing off the problems that we have that the women's soccer have had And I think that's mostly for me, it's about the next, <clears throat> sorry, about the next generation that they should be able to dream big and can play wherever they want. They, I mean, still in, in the world, uh, girls can play soccer. So, I mean, that's, that's the first big step we have to uh, achieve, but we've come, come along uh, a long way so far. And I think that's my, my big drive to, To see young girls dream about being the stars um, in the world in soccer. Yeah, that's why I also have a lot of respect for the both of you as players where you've been already on this journey for so many years without stating any ages. Um, it's It's <laughs> been quite some time. So, I mean, I think you've seen it all where we are kind of in the same age ra range. So I, I know and I understand where it comes from and it, looking into where we are now, uh, we're super happy, but there's still a lot uh, to, to cover and, 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 uh, and to change. Jess, is there anyone that's gone before you that has bridged that gap between football and politics that you admire? I am sat two seats next to Megan Rapino, right? I've been, Rapino has been in my locker room for 10 years. I've been around kind of the American way for a very long time. And I think it was being around these types of, of people and, and seeing that they have a voice and they will use their voice. Um, to make things better and I feel like you know the, the USA national team for example they just are always at the front of big change right they always are you know and and some people like the way that they are some people don't like the way that they are um, but I think from being kind of in the front seat of watching how they go about their change and, and making that happen um, Of course, it's going to have an effect on you, right? Like for so long, you're always taught, you know, just just be happy with what you have. Don't say anything. You know, you should be thankful. You should be thankful. Well, absolutely not. No, I'm not thankful. You know, this this is just like the bare minimum. This is the basic. This is the very, right. very least of what we should be having. And, and, and seeing kind of that change in your own eyes by people being very vocal, you know, and, and some people are like, oh yeah, you know, you can, you can be vocal in a kind of respectful way. Sometimes I'm like, that's not how this works, you know, because sometimes you just need to scream and shout 
to get people to understand and to make a change. Sometimes you need to strike. Sometimes you need to stand up because the message that you are sending is just going against kind of a wall. So I think, yeah, for me being over here and, and watching kind of pioneers of the game create massive change, that, whether people like to admit it or not, has a knock-on effect around the world. Like, I've been able to watch how the Americans work and then I can go back to Wales and be like, we have to change this, we have to do this, we have to do this. We've, still, we've just got like our first contracts for the last 18 months and all of that is based off of what I'm able to see happens over here with regards to conversation, not bucking down, having the difficult kind of um, meetings. It's changed my life in, in how I view how to create change. And it, yeah. it's kind of just been, like I said, I've seen it kind of firsthand um, over here now for the last kind of 10 years. And especially with, you know, the equal pay lawsuit that the girls that uh, took against their association. Like, I can't, I can't imagine many of the teams being able to do that and not only do it, but do it with such success. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And so, yeah. which will have a knock-on effect on the global game, a hundred percent, because yeah. you'll have national teams now being like, wow, look what they've just done. And I think that that is, you know, it's phenomenal. And I, I am just, you know, I get to see it with my own eyes, right? I sit, like I said, I sit two seats down from Pino. And I mean, she is just exceptional. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look in Spain and we've heard the message that the news, of course, about the Spanish uh, association as well. And I think by, by even you're creating that career pathway on the field, but you also can do that off the pitch, of course, in, in that sense. Um, thank you. Nila, are there any barriers that you've experienced that might have made you feel like you didn't want to speak up? Well, I think it's a lot about... Uh, what just said that we kind of brought up like you're supposed to be thankful f thankful and you're supposed to be loyal uh, be happy with what you have that's what you deserve uh, but I mean uh, just to continue on on your answer is that we the women has never uh, we didn't get the chance to vote by being quiet or we didn't get the chance to um, work by being quiet or nice or talking in a nice tone it's it is a it is a fight it is a struggle but i think that's one of the barriers that i found sometimes hard is the the loyalty also towards uh, the ones who are employed by but also this kind of being thankful thankful and also knowing if i speak up now i will get a lot of um hate on social media and that's not always uh, easy to handle. Uh, I found a way now because I'm grounded in myself. I have my family. I have another life <clears throat> outside of soccer than I had before. So now it's easier for me. But I think it's just a lot of just taking the first step of being un not comfortable, uh, maybe speaking out, but it's totally worth it. But I think it's um, one of those things type to break, I don't know if you say that in English, to break the glass roof, the glass ceiling. Yeah. yeah. Is that a, how you say it? I mean, that's Let's where check we with Jess. Go. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Jess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's where we want to reach. And that's what we, or I feel that's what I want to do. And I think you agree with me. And uh, then you have to break those barriers and, and you have to be uncomfortable. But I think that's been a challenge for me sometimes, but I still think every time I say something and I say my mind and speak out or speak up, I think it's worth it because it starts, hopefully starts something. And I know I have my, my fellow, my teammates, uh, both here and like players all over the world that think the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you just said, like, it, it's hard to overcome that. But how challenging is that? And how do you even overcome that? So you said with your family and your teammates, but uh, just to get a sense of how challenging that is. Well, for me, it was just to I, for me, it was just to take the first step, because then you realize you're not alone and um, you have pretty much everyone with you who plays the game with you. But I think for I think it's a lot about being grounded in yourself. Uh, if 
like we're human first and soccer player second and then it makes it also much easier to uh to get over that edge uh because i don't want to sit down after my career and and just been thinking okay could have done that i could have helped someone or we could have reached this far and then i haven't said anything i would be so disappointed on myself and that's not the kind of person i am i know i'm i'm lucky to play the game but uh, i don't want to play it for zero uh, dollars a month you know <laughs> it's not we should have all the possibilities to play soccer uh, first first of all i think before the men but that's not the case but um and for that you have to uh, speak out that makes total sense um and with that in mind uh, how important do you think it is for people with a platform to use it to inform change and highlight issues i think this is an open door but i want to just put it out there yeah for me i think the, the most important thing is is what i always think is if you have a platform like There's a, there's a reason for that, whether you be in sports or arts or, you know, kind of anything like that. Um, and I, I do believe that it, it kind of is your responsibility to, to do more. Like when I, if I look at myself, for example, it, it is not enough for me to, to just be a footballer, right? Not in the climate that we're in, especially in the women's game. You know, and obviously you've been playing it for way too long in the first place. But um, it it would it would have been extremely kind of selfish of me to have not made the decisions that I've made over the years to make sure that the future is better for somebody else. And I think that that is, you know, and Neela said it earlier. That's the most important thing. And it's not just that I want the football to be to be a better situation for the future generations. It's, I want, I want these girls to come through understanding their value as a human, that it is important that they feel empowered to speak. It is important that they speak up, especially in women's sports. I mean, we've heard huge issues when it comes to, you know, an abuse of power or bullying or everything else that goes in around sports in general, but definitely in the, in the kind of women's sports of late. And so it, it's important that the future sees us being vocal, um, being visible, um, and, and, and being strong and empowered, right? And like I said, it's not just about the football side of it. I think oh, that's naturally going to get better and better, um, our environment. But it's more about what kind of... What kind of people are we inspiring? How are we inspiring them as, as human beings? I think that, that that is the bigger version of what using your platform actually looks like as opposed to just, you know, saying things that, you know, yeah, could try and create change, but it's more about how can we, how can we be those, that type of role model as well as a footballing role model. That's how I view using your platform and why it's so important and why it's just not enough to, for me to just be a footballer. It's, it's just, it just would never have been enough in our climate. And, I, and I, I want people that are coming through the next generation to understand that it is equally as important that they keep doing that. Yeah, no, I, I truly believe in that as an individual, you can make a change and we all have our circles of influence around us. And it's just the question, how do you influence that? But um, as you said, like that uncomfortable feeling, it's just also part of speaking up and, and, and pu putting yourself out there, which is a vulnerable process, of course, as well. So um, obviously we know how important it is to engage in political conversations and to help shape change. But again, it's not always easy. Um, in fact, it can be quite dangerous to express views or to talk about LGBTQ uh, plus issues, for example. And in some parts of the world, it's it's even not it's not. We just also said that it's not even even possible. So, um, Jess, there's a certain amount of bravery required, isn't there, to do this? Yeah, of course. I think you know every time, especially I for me, especially right now, and I, it's really interesting. I had this conversation with my family the other day. We all 
we have a group chat and we always have like big debates because there's six of us and we're all adults now so all of our kind of thought process and political views are like completely on the spectrum but I don't I don't know about you Neela but for me right now I feel like every kind of decade especially the LGBTQ community the world finds a reason to keep really trying to attack us right and right now it's about trans and trans athletes and they're attacking that kind of system for me it's not a coincidence that it's always our community that is always still fighting every single decade even if it's something different it's the same fight we can't do this we can't do that and soon as soon as they get one legislation legislation through it goes, oh, well, it's about sports, and then, oh, it's actually about high schools, and actually you can't go to bars, and actually you can't do this. And, you know, I think right now the climate is more so now than, say, like five years ago, if I'm speaking out about LGBTQ now, I get a lot of pushback right now, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be on Instagram, you know, people coming at me, and I'm like, well, this is an interesting landscape because, say, five three to five years ago, it wouldn't have been as bad as that. And so I can already feel that the climate is changing, right? And like to point out what Neela said earlier, you know, Wales, for example, have just qualified for the World Cup for the first time in 64 years, right? It's incredible for our nation. But if I go, I could be put in prison, right? And like you've just said, I am the most capped player of our, our nation. I have played for my country for over 17, near 19 years now. And I can go to the World Cup because it's obviously in my off season. But actually, if I go, just by being who I am as a human being, I can end up in prison. And I think, you know, like that's kind of the messaging that I am pushing this pride is, yo, we are under attack right now again. And even if it's not me personally, it is our community. And we have to really kind of push out right now that this is not okay. And so, and so like you said, it's hard. Right now I do feel like it is hard because I feel like there's a shift in, in how much work we've done. I feel like we are, we are getting attacked a little bit right now. And so it's like we got to push even harder, which obviously opens up to social media abuse and all these things that people say to you, you know, which is is stupid. But I mean, that's what they say, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's why you, of course, you have that uncomfortable feeling. You got to have that bravery to speak out. Uh, And then you also got to be close to yourself, Nila. That's also what I uh, love about what you've said. Like you got to be, yeah, you got to know who you are. And yeah, you got to be ready for that. What 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 might come after that comment. Um, So Nila, uh, with that in mind, um, I know you've said before that you wish more people would speak up uh, no matter the issue. And uh, do you still still feel strongly uh, about that <clears throat> yeah totally uh, I think there is a power in numbers but it, there's also power in um, that the group like that when it take if you say gay people that the fight is not taken by the gay people people it's taken by the straight people the heterosexual and also it's the same with black and white or religion or whatever uh, I actually think this was Megan Rapino who said it and um, somewhere that, uh, you know, when, when we are not doing our own struggle, but we get help from the one who is not even in the, uh, in that group, then that's when the real change is being made. So it's the same if you only take women's soccer or only but women's soccer, it's first when the men wants us to have the same thing as they have, then when that's when the real progress is beginning and so I think uh, totally the, the power in numbers um, is very true I think the more who the more people who speak up and the more people is trying to make a change uh, it will go faster but I think the climate is changing both in the good and the bad direction like the people with the power <laughs> is doing it worse at least in Sweden I'm very accepted in the streets and wherever I go, but the, the people with the power that 
who would never be in this situation. They are making the decisions. And um, Nila, you've spoken about receiving death threats after wearing a rainbow armband for when you were playing for Wolfsburg a few years ago. Um, how did how did that make you feel? I mean, of course, it's it's uncomfortable. Uh, you don't want to, but it's not the first time, and it won't be the last. Um, but um, I mean, with the environment also in in Germany and or in the club, I felt safe. It was not like I, I felt like they had a chance to uh, get to me or something like that. And you also, you should never like ignore it, but it's sadly the world we're living in that people don't want me to have children. They don't think I deserve to live. Uh, my children should be taken away from me and so on. Uh, but uh, for me, it helps me a lot with uh, that I come to this place now where I I'm grounded in myself and I also feel the support from, from the community a lot. And also that's a positive thing with so social media that you also get supportive stuff and nice comments and like keep doing what you're doing. Um, and also uh, girls and boys who, who writes that, okay, you help me come out or you help me be myself or whatever. Um, so that the beautiful stories means a lot and they also helped me a lot uh, just getting through uh, stupid people's opinion there will always be this kind of um yeah not accepting people in the world but we just have to stay strong and uh take the struggle because yeah nice Okay, thank you for that. And you've both been very vocal about LGBTQ plus issues in the past. Um, Jess, you even received an MBA for services to football and the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, that must make you very proud, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the getting getting it for um, football, but most importantly, my work with the LGBTQ kind of community that was obviously more, it was more special for me personally especially with you know the, the journey of of navigating this life as a as a lesbian but then kind of deciding to be public about it and then deciding to just kind of really live my life um as free as I possibly can you know they weren't always easy decisions but you know never Never a decision that I regretted ever, you know, for a day of my for a day of my life. You know, if anything, it was an instant relief. Um, and so, yeah, it was was really kind of a proud moment for myself. Um, but it, it was cute because you know it was it was an incredibly proud moment for my family, which you know I've, you know it was uh, me and my family have been on this journey as well, right? And so um, it was nice to kind of get that. T together, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you. Um, Nila is, is also, uh, is, uh, her dog is also around, I think. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Always good to have the dog around. Yeah, and the cats are also here. <laughs> it's full house. Nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> Everybody's oh, getting wow. around you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> You're the center of the, of the, of the universe, which is wow. good. So, um, <laughs> Clear you, clearly, you both have a wealth of experience in football. Uh, we've spoke about all of the many years, a bit too long even uh, if, if it comes down to Jess. Uh, and you've overcome some really tough injuries and tough times. Uh, how vital is that mental strength as well as the knowledge and experience you have when forging ahead with informing change or political issues, Nila? Well, I mean, I think uh, the older you get, uh, the wiser you get also not all people but i think for me and and um, <laughs> maybe it sounds boring now but i also i know who i am i know my value is not me as a soccer player it's me as a human being uh, and that's also what kind of gives me my mental strength both in performing on the field but also just being the best of who i can be uh, off the field and so I think for me, it's, it's been maybe since I was 25, I felt like, okay, I know my place. I know who I am. I know my value. And that kind of what gives me my mental strength to, to, 
I don't know, I don't want to say brave, but just be aware of what we have to do or why, what I can do. And like Jess said, I don't want to be just a soccer player. I don't, I would never be satisfied just playing my, doing my career, doing nothing else to, uh, to make it better for girls and making them see their own value. So I think it's just, my mental strength, I think has been like the, the drive I have for for making it better for for the next generation if that makes any sense yes that definitely makes sense um and, and what sort of legacy because you're kind of already tapping into that but what kind what sort of legacy would you like to leave so that the women the voices of women and girls are heard oh wow uh can just answer that from first <laughs> yeah it's a bit <laughs> no but i think it's just <laughs> i think it's just don't put about... me on the spot Nila. <laughs> yes, please, I will. Please take that one first. No, but um, I don't know. The legacy of just um, actually as an individual, but, but also as a team, uh, make it better and uh, have an impact, impact on um, the game and the, the surroundings and how people treat you, that you get the rese- respect you, you deserve as a woman or just as a person, uh, I think it's a better word. Um, uh, yeah, I might get back to, with a better answer after Jess has. It's a really, it's a, re- it's a really good answer. <laughs> Jess, Jess, do you want to fill, fill in the gaps? Yeah, no, I, I think, I think if people were to look at say, you know, in like say 20 years and people say back home and to be like oh yeah do you remember Jess Fishnot probably they didn't but let's say just say they did I think they will you know I, it's kind <laughs> I of think like, so too. <laughs> if they were to talk about it or talk about me specifically I'd want them to talk about kind of what I represented and who I was and what I was able to do for women's football for example or you know um the che- the change that that we have done um, back home in women's football has been phenomenal. And, you know, I'd rather, I'd, I'd like them to be able to talk about that and then be like, you know, she was actually pretty good at soccer too, right? You know, like that would be like the kind of end bit of, of what that legacy leads. I think that is what, um, for me, is the, the, the kind of sole purpose is that, you know, you kind of, it's kind of the same with, you know, for our country, it's the same with Bale. Like you look at Bale and you would go, yeah, he's, he's incredible. But his legacy is what he's been able to do for our country as a, as a whole, you know, shaping our football, our football in our nation um, for, for years and then being able to finally get to a World Cup, right? And then they'll go, oh, do you remember his goal against Liverpool in Champions League? Like it'll just then a knock-on effect of, of that, and I think that that is the bigger picture when it comes to what does a legacy look like. You know, it, the legacy is not my trophies or my awards or anything like that. The legacy of what I, what what have I been able to leave better than what it was when I when I kind of came. You know, and so that is what I would hope um, it would look like. You know. Yeah, and knowing you only from from the outside, from Instagram, both of you, I can for surely say that that you both definitely are trailblazers and have been doing that. So again, a lot of respect for that. Okay, the last question. Um, This one is going to be, I think, interesting, but um, really just want to hear your reaction. So let's start with you, Nila. Um, When someone says to you that you should stay out of politics, what is your response? Hell no. No, but <laughs> they can... no, but I actually, yeah. Well, that would that probably be my answer. Uh, I don't think there's. Why should I? Uh, it's probably they want to stay uh, that that I stay out of politics because I don't agree with whatever um, the opinion is from that person. But I think it's so important that uh, we take place and that we uh, are involved in politics. Um, as women and as people yeah. with platforms. So a big hell, yeah. Yeah, a big hell no. Hell a big no. hell no. Okay, cool. 
<laughs> Hell no, amen to that. Jess, amen. anything to add on that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I think Neil has summed it up uh, very, very well. And I think, too, what I, what I do always say when I do hear this is that for people to say that, especially to sports people in general, but especially to women in sports, I, I just don't understand because what they obviously don't realize is how much sports has an effect on society. Sports is the number one kind of corporation that affects society as big as it does. And so to, to try and take that out of then politics, it doesn't make sense. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. But then to try and take a woman in sports out of politics is even kind of a, a bigger situation because of everything that women have gone through since the beginning of time. And so, you know, that's why, you know, obviously people say it because they don't want to listen to a woman or they don't want to listen to the arguments of inequality that has existed for however long. But when you kind of break it down like that, I mean, what they're saying just doesn't make any sense. You know, it's illogical. And so, yeah, hell no for one. And for two, sports is the, the biggest possible channel of change in society. And so from that perspective, it, it just does not make sense. I'll do a mic drop for you because you don't have uh, both of you. Don't have it, so I'll just do the mic drop like that. So we hope you've enjoyed this one. Jess and Nila, thank you so much for joining us on the Football Podcast. Uh, to me, this definitely was one to remember. Uh, I think we've definitely demonstrated why it's so important to be confident in your beliefs and also to have the conviction to express them. Be sure to follow and subscribe to We Play Strong. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.